Hello, welcome to Gentleman Dog Portrait. I am Dean. Hi, I'm Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here to talk about things straight into your ear holes. Ugh, yes. <laughs> I, I could probably come up with a new tagline for the show uh, every week, honestly. Straight to your ear holes. Yeah. It, 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 they're not all good. They're not all good. Uh, <laughs> I don't like that one. <laughs> well, I, I mean, like, they can't all be steaks. Sometimes you get a hot dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually remember uh, reading one time, someone made a comparison to, like, uh, sex when you're in a relationship or when you're married versus uh, masturbation. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, sex, sex with your significant other is like, it, it, it's a steak. It's a, sometimes it's a great steak. Sometimes it's a, sometimes it's like the bad cut of beef. But sometimes you just want a hot dog, you know? Yeah, I guess it's good. That's <laughs> that good. Kind of sounds I like, mean, kind of like sounds like something the view would say, like uh, the the four women. Over... Sometimes you want this, but you know, sometimes you just want a hot dog. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> it's. I would say it's. It's more like getting a. Uh, yeah, I mean, I. I don't. Yeah, it's. It's like getting a steak at a restaurant versus like cooking like a. Like a hamburger on your grill at home or something. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not far off. Either way, it's yeah, not yeah, far yeah. off. It's just like... I you, thought you were going to say, like, I, it, it's like cooking a steak I'm, at home versus getting I one just, at a restaurant. It's like you get... It's much more... And I think in that different. case... And I think in that case, it's like... Uh, I think that's the difference between having sex with someone you know and like, hiring a person. There's just team. not another person there that you have to worry about at all and how they're doing or... It's just more... Purely you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can I can see that. I can see like that. you can just do it how you want, stretch it out, the the time. But or I I it think could be on super a... short or super super long and you're not gonna annoy someone else. Or... Yeah. But I think uh no matter what, I think we can agree on a more objective scale, like steaks are better than hamburgers. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, cheeseburgers are like my favorite food ever. But I, I think I, if someone told me a steak was better than a, a burger, I'd be like, you know what, you're right. It's true. Yeah. Do you like sex? Do you, <laughs> do you like sex, or do you like having sex with yourself? Uh, other people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pick that one. Yeah, the the one yeah. the one where it's less shame. Yeah. I oh I, I don't everyone know. everyone masturbates. That's the yeah. thing. Or unless unless you don't, in which case I would really. It's t- Really love to have a talk with you. It's this whole. Uh, I want to know how you know, do. Some things. people, man, I'm sure they yeah. don't. But I, I, but like the the crossing the barrier that people sometimes feel the need to cross is like discussing details. Like we, it's a, uh, see, most it's, people watch porn, but you, I don't think you want to get into this. You don't really want to do it in public. Like if <laughs> you don't want to do it in public, people okay, wouldn't yeah. be happy if they found you were doing it in public. Probably, especially if you're a guy. I, I, I mean. That'd be people would there, be creeped out. Are there any stories of like women public masturbation? Are really there stories? There are videos, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are girls that that uh, I'm, I'm sure, sure there like, are. Like, but, but they're not. I, I'm pretty sure ninety nine point nine percent of the time they're not just like you know, <laughs> in the middle of Times Square. You know what I mean? Like it's just like <laughs> it's under wraps. It's public, but it's under wraps. I'm sure it happens. But but um. What I'm saying, though, is... Has anyone is... actually public... Oh, okay, yeah, I'm sure there have been people who have publicly masturbated in Times Square. Yeah, but that's, I'm that's, pretty sure that's, that's true. That's a pretty impressive feat. Um, the... the, But, but okay, so, like, it's not something you would... Just to, to... For the sake of my argument, it's not something you would do in public, so then it's not some... So people feel funny talking about it publicly. Yeah. Some people. And it's not a, it's a topic for every place, you know, and every... It's not, it's not like you're going to go meet your girlfriend's parents at dinner and be like, hey, I was masturbating the other day. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. Like, that's <laughs> that'd be really weird. But... Yeah, you almost... You, well, someone's got to start that conversation. And it's usually the person <coughs> that really doesn't have a lot of regard for personal space anyway. Yeah, they lack you know I mean? uh, tact sometimes. I, there have been... I remember back in high school, there have been several people who will just flat out say, so what kind of porn do you watch? Yeah, and you know what? I, as much as as much as we all enjoy porn, uh, I'm not I'm not going to give anyone details about how I enjoy it. <laughs> but I will say this: it involves lilac scented candles. Oh my gosh! I'm not. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, porn is just very. Uh, porn is porn. It's like an all you can eat buffet. 
So, you know. <laughs> really? You don't, if you you don't usually, internet. I don't know. I, there You have your favorites, but there's always, uh, sometimes you add a little variety. I feel like I would be a much more productive person back in a time when porn was basically <laughs> just in magazines. Yeah, it's like, imagine if you didn't have porn and you were, I don't know. I, oh my god, I would, I would be so much more accomplished. Nah, I don't know. And I mean, again, I don't think I would be. <laughs> I don't think, I, I think I'd be the same you Remember, like, your now. imagination, when you had to use your imagination? That was like... Yeah, I remember that. It's good, <laughs> but it's also different. I think imagination has been slowly replaced with arguments in my head that I will never actually have. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff, yeah. Like there's a there's this great um, Seinfeld episode where George keeps remembering that he keeps getting like like uh, insulted in meetings and stuff with this guy by this guy, and he's like driving home, and he's like, "That's what I should like." It's like what's it called? Staircase. Uh, yeah, it was something like that. Um, uh, staircase wit. Yeah, staircase wit. He's like, "That's ex- oh, I would have got him so good if I said that," and then you know. No, I, I get you, yeah. I get you. Uh, the thing about bringing up Seinfeld yeah. uh, is, I mean, I, I, I could... a lot of the episodes are inside <laughs> jokes. Either you know it or you don't. Yeah. I well, don't think you can really pick up something and say, that's a Seinfeld joke. Yeah, it's I just, recognize uh, it, never saw it. He's very, uh, George, he just never does well. He never, he's a never do well. No, that's not true. But he never, he never really succeeds. He's always yeah, getting exactly. skunked. And he's... He finally thinks of the perfect, he finally says the thing that he wants, he, you know, sticks it to the guy in front of all these people, and he's like, ha, you know, he's like, I had sex with your wife, oh yeah, well I had sex with your wife, and everybody just, there's no reaction, and they all look at him, and somebody's like, his wife is in a coma, and it's very uncomfortable, and so it backfires on him, like, despite the guy being so mean to him, like, all the time. Ugh. Anyway, wow. so that's a, we just, uh, in my family, in my, with my cousins who are my age, we, we see each other and we say, oh, yeah. <laughs> we just say, it has no kind, it has, there's no meaning to it except that we used to say it when we were younger, and now we still say it. Yeah, I, mm, I don't think we really had that, uh, I mean, my parents were big into Seinfeld, but myself... I don't know. I think we were more Simpsons folk. Yeah. Although... I, I'm pretty well... Yeah, I like the Simpsons. I like Seinfeld. Yeah. Seinfeld's gonna get uh, two... By the way, uh, Hulu buying the web rights to Seinfeld. Or in talks, maybe. Really? Yeah, 200 no million. I thought, I thought uh, the last thing Jerry Seinfeld... Uh, well, I know that he's doing Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Yeah. I don't think that was going to evolve into something else. Because I know those are like... Half of the time it's car commercials, but the other half of the time it's like it's it's thought provoking stuff. It's nice to have a. It's pleasant talk. It's pleasant. People are interested in what celebrities have to say, even if it's uh, normal stuff. Then you feel good because it's like, oh, I'm just like him. Oh, someone that people see on the daily thinks the same way I do. Isn't, very isn't very that a good. Cool um, it, I I think what's something that's really cool is uh, Howard Stern because he his his interviews are just like good. When you, okay, when you watch, like, uh, any of these late night talk shows, the extent that you get into an interview with somebody, and it's, like, a real interview, it's, like, never. It's always, like, a planted story that's funny that they tell right, 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 for, right. like, a segment in between commercials, and then they're on to, like, the next thing, you know? Like, the guy appears for a second and is like, hey, go see my new movie. This is a funny thing that happened to me once that's probably a lie. Go see my movie. Go see my movie. And that's it. And then, like... Oh, you know what I hate when it comes to that? Planted jokes. Uh, I remember, uh, what was it, a few weeks back? What was it, last week? Uh, we talked about a, a subreddit, uh, I Am Very Smart. Yeah. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the things about it was the kid, the the, the uh, son from Modern Family. Okay. What is he, like 12 or something? Sure. Uh, he, plays, he plays a dumb kid on television, but... Uh, in an interview with Conan or something, it was like Conan or Ellen DeGeneres. I am. I yeah. doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. The focus One of those is on the celebrities kid. with He's hair. Like, I play. I play. Uh, I play a dumb kid on television, but I'm actually a, 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 a me- member of Mensa. Yeah. And, like, he's going on about how, oh, we talk about string theory, we talk about quantum physics, and yeah. people on the show are like, do you understand me? And then he, like, he, the, the host is, like, dumbfounded. He's like, 
do you understand me? And, like, people loved it. People thought it was funny, but I also thought it was like, well, you're kind of a prick, aren't you? You're, you're, you have, you can't even buy cigarettes and you're a prick. <coughs> it's, uh, it's tough, man, to, to even hear what anyone is saying when they're famous. Because it's all planned out for them, kind of, a lot of times. Very true, they got the writers on there. And if they do say something, it's usually really bad. Like, and they said something terrible, and <laughs> now everyone's talking about it. But... Do you have a specific instance in mind? Oh, or... of when people say things? Yeah. I don't know, like, uh, when, uh, Mel Gibson got pulled over. <laughs> or, or when Kramer... Kramer yeah, was doing stand-up. Kramer exploded, they had an yeah. outburst on stage. <laughs> But, but, um... Oh, man. Yo, the... Although I think that one, I think that one was like he was trying to get a laugh, uh, and it well, completely backfired. He was just... The the guy was making him, him mad, and... I don't know. It, it was not really... That was not a good time It was just not good. He, the, the... But Howard Stern does these interviews, man. They're long. You can be on, the, like, for an hour. It can be just... Jim Carrey talking for an hour, and he just asks some real questions, and they skirt the questions. They try to get away from them sometimes. Some, and you can see like, who you you just give you're like, wow, Jonah Hill. Like you just told me this story where you weren't so cool in the story. Like you're just being yourself, kind of, and owning up to your life. And like somebody else will just be like, just you know, Teflon, and they'll just slide out of every uncomfortable question. So it's interesting. You get to see kind of. I might have to check those out, actually. How people measure up. But it's only... It's, uh... It kind of reminds me of uh, Actor Studio. Have you yeah. ever seen those? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that. And, like, uh, he's... But it's everybody... Who... Jim Carrey is not a crazy person, but as a dedicated actor. He's crazy. And then a crazy person. He's crazy. <laughs> According to... He had this whole... Uh, his whole interview, he covers this uh, religious experience he has in the mountains where he does, like, hallucinogenics in the desert he goes on like a spirit quest or something yeah. you know and he's i don't know it's fine but uh, <laughs> that's how you end just, that. Yeah, i'm not yeah, gonna get into it but he basically spaced it, out he's it, fine it, it's fine it's a fun it's okay it's a family friendly story cool. um <laughs> but everybody Although, so many people think howard stern's like hor- this horrible like no, well no person. i know that's i know he that's does a, a character. lot of that's a he character, does a lot huh? of stuff yeah but his interviews are golden. So it's like, like how it's like how people think Stephen Colbert was like this uh, Republican pundit, and yeah. like, like no, it's satire. And then it's like you you see how he is actually in person, and he's like calm, yeah. and I don't know. It, it's it's people confusing the character with the person. Yeah, he does. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's worse examples out there. Like oh wow, you're a, uh, mm. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Howard Stern does a lot of nasty. Sh- <laughs> that's kind of an understatement. It does get people listening. That is very true. That is very true. All right, so okay. let's, let's jump into some stuff. Uh, it's been a really weird week. Uh, what with Nepal and Baltimore and Bernie Sanders now running for president. Yeah. Did you hear about that? No, I did not hear about that. Oh, man, that is like the one glimmer of hope that's happened this entire week. My uh, my family's actually going down to... Uh, they, were, they were going to go see a, a baseball game in Baltimore... And then, like, a few days ago, they enacted a curfew. It's like, oh, well then, that kind of shoots yeah. a hole in that. My cousin lives there. Oh, really? Yeah, he's like a gunsmith there. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, that's, yeah, I don't know. He got robbed at gunpoint at one time. Was it last week? No, it was uh, some, It was like last year. But, he, you know, they held. They took his wallet, they took his keys. Yeesh. Baltimore, of all places. Yeah. Well, it's not. A, I was about to call great... Baltimore the city of brotherly love, and I'm like, a... nope, oh. it's not. It's not a great area. It's like Detroit, Baltimore. Really? Yeah, you don't want to be in some, you know. There's t- there's areas that are nicer for. But that there was a song visit. in Hairspray about it. How could it be that bad? Baltimore, it's just not that. Yeah, there's no songs there's about Detroit. There. No one wants to go to Detroit. That's why there's no songs about Detroit. <laughs> yeah. But there's a song about Baltimore and how it's a good morning there. Uh... <laughs> It might be an okay morning. I wouldn't be there uh, at night. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> but now, yeah, it's very crazy there. I don't know what's going on. There's lots of tension now. Well, I remember uh, I was talking with someone about the whole rioting thing, and they are trying to make sense of the fact that why the mayor basically told the police to stand down and let them riot. And, like, the past, the past three, two times that there have been, like, protests and 
almost rioting. They, uh, the the police were the bad guys in those situations. People kind of saw them as the enemy. So I'm th- I'm thinking maybe this is like a way of saying, look, we've seen what happens when the police intervenes, and they're already mad at the police. Let's just let them get it out of their system. Yeah. You know it's, what I mean? it's you know it's gonna be people see if you. See, you see someone doing something, it kind of gives you permission to do it, too. Yeah. And so one town, one city does this, and it's, you know, you see it, everyone sees it. And then something happens in your town, and you feel like you're entitled to this kind of reaction. You know what I mean? Like, it, it might have been that if none of none well, of these other things happened. It's mob mentality, happen, you know what I mean? Like, it's been, like, a, a couple of years, like, Trayvon Martin, all these things have happened, and... I feel like if none of these things were... Let's pretend like none of these things happened and this was the one incident that happened in Baltimore, there wouldn't be this riot. This riot is like the echo and Coleman. It's like people feel like it's our chance to well, represent like our anger now. Well, you know, since... Our collective anger. Since Trayvon Martin, it's definitely become more of a publicized thing when it comes to police brutality and yeah. vigilante justice. So... Uh, now that that's being reported on more often, people think it's happening more often. So, when it's publicized more, people yeah. are thinking, this is now a thing that, oh my god, the past, what, ten years? You, this wasn't an issue. Now know, it is! I was on, I'm, okay. I, I think take, it's happening at the same frequency, you know? Just I take publicized the, more. Yeah, I take the train. I and, do too. At night. Uh, I do not. And I, and it's, it's, through, okay, like Friday night, Saturday night, or the night's. It's impossible for me not to, like, want to jump off the train because everybody on the train is, like, 19, everybody drunk. Oh, drunk train? And dressed up, like, I didn't even real like, douchey. I didn't even pay attention to How I Met Your Mother that much, but I do remember the drunk train, and I remember that's it's, and that's it's, kind of a true thing. It's a little bit like everybody's going to party and I'm going to work, and I don't like that, but then it's also like you're all so dumb and, like, I don't even want to, like, I can't believe the conversations I'm overhearing on the train. They're the worst, most superficial, but but whatever. But I heard, anyway, the reason that I'm just bringing That's this up. That's a right for another time for me, but is, yeah. Is, um, these guys, I was just really tired and just trying to sleep on my way to work a little bit. And these guys were just, like, talking about all this stuff they had no clue about. And they're like, yeah, like, you know, like... Politics? They were, they're, they're they were the, the guy was his Did argument. Did they solved the economic problem? He, well, he was like like the riots in Baltimore they were talking about, and he oh, was like, okay, you yeah. know, this happens all the time, but now they're covering it on the news. Like riots happen. Like he, he was trying to like you know how you're saying like okay like things like the shooting happen or the or somebody getting shot by the police happen at a regular frequency probably, but now we're just starting to. See the now it's like a, a hot topic for people to cover in the news and blow up. Yep. You know the news news networks are really like making sure we all know about each time this happens, which is whatever you know, but which is true. Whatever gets them ratings. But this guy was saying that okay, like normally in America, in any given city, there could be like a riot happening, but now just now is when we're starting to cover this. So now it seems like it's happening a lot, but it's always happening. We're always having riots. That was like what he was saying. And if that's I was the like, case, what? America really shouldn't be <laughs> like when like oh there are just America like closet be riots that are that happening. Part. Like oh there was a riot and uh, like I get it, we're a big country, but yeah. I, I think it's a bit of a stretch to say what? there's always what? a riot happening. Like oh there's a riot in Cleveland <laughs> this week, but we're not going to cover it. We're, <laughs> we have more important stories to. No, this riot was happening because uh, they oh raised the gas tax. No, no, what, what please, really, what people really want to see is this guy got murdered. So we're and, having a riot about that. And they're like, on the topic of riots, uh, do you remember anything about the O.J. Simpson trial? Yes. What? Yeah, I and remember. the fact that people, I when when I first heard about that, uh, when I first heard about people rioting in Los Angeles, yeah. Uh, I immediately thought, oh, well, they were, they were probably upset that uh, uh, justice wasn't properly served. Everyone no. knew he did. And then I, like, heard, no, they were rioting because Celebration. he, he <laughs> won the trial. I'm like, are you kidding? Uh, Maybe people just want to riot for the fuck of it. It's like a public, uh, I don't know. But it becomes like a breakdown of uh, your normal things, you know? Like, you normally would... Any one of those people normally would walk down the street and mind their own business, but because of what's going on around them, they feel like it's uh, fair 
game and acceptable for them to do whatever. Do uh, stuff they would never care to do even probably. Before we, before we move on to the news stories, because yeah. I got a couple of these, because even though it was like a very, uh, very exciting week, yes. to put it that way, uh, there also has been like some weird uh, developments happening with odd news, Okay, which is what this show kind of is about. <laughs> Uh, but it reminds me of every time that there's a riot uh, happening near me, or every time I hear the news. Yeah, no, New York City. Like, every were, like, time pro- there's a riot happening any, near me. Any time yeah. that there's a riot, any in in this part of the world. Yeah, this part of the world, I should say. Uh, I'm always reminded of that movie, The Purge. Yeah, Have you ever seen it? No, but I know the premise of this movie. Yeah, the premise of the movie is all cl- all crime is legal. But For how like a, yeah. how do you even continue living? In that, in where the riot was after that happened, you know what I mean? Well, it's just, I mean, if everybody agrees on it, like there's gonna be no rules, no no laws for what is it, twenty four hours, forty eight hours, something? A week? Yeah, it, it was like for for twelve. Was it twelve hours or twenty four hours? So some Whatever pe- it was, it's like a period of time where all crime is legal, and that's basically what happens in a riot. Some people get into their safe houses and lock down. Yeah, and other people like. Sharpen their knives. And but instead of it being legal, there's like there's little consequences for it, unless you make yourself known. Like if you were a known instigator during a riot, there's going to be some pretty heavy consequences. There's there's a the band Sublime has this song, um, April 29th, nineteen ninety two. That's how the, that's actually how the song starts. April 29th, nineteen ninety two. There was a riot on the streets. Tell me where were you after the Rodney King uh, thing? Mm. Um, and he's basically saying like they, you know. People are arguing, people on the news or whatever argue that it's for the black man or for the Mexican, but, like, we went out to the, uh, record store or whatever, and we went out to the, and, like, where do you think I got this guitar I'm playing today? Like, then I, we got back to my house, and, like, I realized I needed some new home furnishings, and we took the van back out and loaded it back up, and, like... Like, this was an opportunity for me to come up in life. Like, we didn't care about the politics of the situation. Like, if you're a store owner and, like, you're not backed by Walmart or Wendy's or whatever, like, you're kind of screwed after a riot. Your inventory is gone. It does suck. It's not very... It's not good, but people will take advantage of the situation. They don't really necessarily have a stance, you know? Yeah, no, they will... They might use the stance as an excuse, but <laughs> stealing is uh, stealing, man. Yeah, no, it, it is. It is. like, But there's, like, little to no consequence for it. Unless unless you're caught somehow. That's or kind unless, of like, true of every uh, crime. I think. No, that's very true. That's very true, but, like, with a riot, there's so <laughs> many people doing it that it's hard to pinpoint yeah, who's it's doing a, what. It's a good chance to steal if you want to. Like, hey, I remember that TV. That that was in my store. You still have the sticker price on it. What's it doing in your What's it doing There's in your house? So many. The riot happened, and I saw this TV. Like, so wasn't, wasn't that because this guy died? Where Where's the justice in that? And like, mm. I don't even know what I would steal. What would you steal? <laughs> I don't even know. That's a, like, I'm already concerned about the consequences here. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even rob a, a cash register. Probably go to Best Buy. Get a bunch of computers or something. Oh, well, now that I'm actually, like, Laptops. doing the show, I may as well, like, No, go they're to... all, like, bolted down with that weird wire. And... Yeah, grab a wire cutter. Yeah. No one's gonna stop you. Now that I'm doing the show, I may as well, like, <laughs> if there was a riot, I would grab more microphones. <laughs> now that I, now that I yeah, think about it. Yeah, go to the music store. Uh, but one last word on the riots. Uh, later on in the week, I found out that there were people uh, who were from Baltimore or living there right now. Uh, saying, oh, well, 95% of the people, they're like, they're pro- they're peacefully protesting. They're just kind of there. There were, like, pictures yeah, sure of kids it's... giving water bottles to the riot police. There was a... And I'm like, well, it's yeah. still 5% of a huge amount of people. That's still... It's still enough yeah. to make it devastating. If an entire city... If an entire city rioted, thing... an entire population, that would be terrible. Yeah. That would be, like, beyond the point of repair... Buildings would crumble. They, they, yeah. A few people can do a lot of damage, but I also think that they drum it up a little bit because it's good business for the news uh, companies. No, of course it is. It's good. You're gonna want to watch some terrible of thing happening. CNN has been nonstop. Oh, there's a new like, development in this uh, riot that's been happening for the past right, five days. Breaking news is just like on the screen all the time. All the time. So like, what? But I mean, what are you gonna? Uh, I don't know. It, it's something that's going to be interesting and entertainment in a way to you because you don't you're not there you know and mm-hmm. but then when it happens near you now you have this exaggerated feeling of what should happen you know these people showed how frustrated they were because of this this happened near me 
I need to be at that level or greater. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I don't know. Mm. It's a little irresponsible. Okay. On to the weirder news. On to the weirder. Especially since... Yes. in, In the wake of earthquakes and riots and Bernie Sanders and droughts, have you heard of Wanksy? Yes. I actually know about this. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So there's, uh, in Greater Manchester, England, there's been a mystery artist who goes by the name of Wanksy, uh, as a play on words with Banksy, yeah. to, uh, that paints penises around potholes to get them fixed. Yeah, so, so potholes have been around for, like, a couple of years. Nothing going on with them. Big potholes in the road. Uh, this guy draws dicks around the potholes, and within like 24 hours or something, or within a week or whatever it is, they're filled just to because I don't know if it's they're just embarrassed of the dicks in the road, or if people are calling in complaining because of this. I think th- I honestly think now that I've uh, read this, I think it's largely because they're embarrassed. Not anyone actually has been complaining because kids draw dicks all the time. So you can't say, well, my child doesn't know what a dick is, and yeah, he's been scarred for yeah. life because of this very crude drawing on the street. Yeah. Well, it's still a crude drawing on the street, even if you know what a dick is. It's Although, like, I gotta say, to look at a here's dick this one, here's on this one. You gotta see this. <laughs> Instead of a dick, he actually branched uh, out and made it look like a, uh, a woman's spread eagle. With a pothole right there. With a the... pothole right, right where, yeah, right exactly. There. Right Right there. Use your imagination. But... I gotta say, this is, like, inspiring. Because if there's anything that I've learned from uh, councils who are actually in charge of uh, addressing these problems, they don't want to do it. And they yeah. meet, like, very infrequently. I I have to say, uh, something that bothers me about potholes is that they're never even with the road. And, like, I feel like it could be oh, it's done. it's like the, the road is, like, gray, and then it's, like... Well, not even, like, I don't need them to be the same color, but... Oh, oh okay, all right. right. <laughs> the fill, the, the, the whatever they fill it with, it's always a raised bump. It's very true. It's never, like, level. And I feel like, could it not be level? Could you not make it... Could you not make it level, sir? Could you not Shall I draw a giant, giant I mean, penis it, all over this road? There's gotta be a reason why it's it like that, right? I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, but, I mean... I'm sure it's there's a reason for it. But it I, me. every morning I drive... It, it's like a six-minute drive from my house to the train station. And then it's like, after that, I don't have to worry about driving. Uh, then six minutes to drive home. And on occasion, it's like... Well, not even on occasion, like, multiple times during the week. It's like ten minutes to get from my place to my girlfriend's place. Fiance. Gotta stop doing that. Um, And I could probably, like, make a tally of how many potholes I either narrowly avoid or just drive over because I just don't care. Oh, yeah. And they're not pleasant. Last... I know I'm I'm preaching to the choir here. No one actually, like, thinks potholes are fun, but, like, damn, that is, like, a really weird hole in... The center of the road. Why is that there? I, I, um, it happened, well, you know, it, it's the weather that... It, it's water, I know. It's but, water, but, it freezes, um, it expands. Not this past winter, but the winter before, we had a road that just, like, something was, the conditions were right, whatever, and the weather, you know, with, when it rained and when it, when the freezing happened, and this whole road just, it, it was like, it broke out in potholes, and it was horrible to drive on. And they they repaved the whole road. They just repaved it. Yeah, because I, I think people are. I think people when it comes to potholes, uh, they think, oh well. I mean, this is this sucks. But they don't actually like call and do something. It sucks about when it. it's a deep pothole and it, like it's night and I'm driving on the right lane and you next can't to a tree it. line and You're I, never then I'm like, it. it feels like I hit a tree. Yeah, it's right. like boom, like. <laughs> Totally yeah, the entire startling. car shakes. You I'm think like, like you Whoa, popped a wheel. I feel like I hit somebody. Yeah, like, you feel like, like your entire what, car is going to be hit? lopsided at that point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's effective. I might. <laughs> I'm not going to condone it, and I'm certainly not going to try it myself. Wink, wink. But I mean, getting a spray can when it's night and just going to these potholes and just drawing dicks around them, like that might be effective after that. Especially oh, since no. like these uh, these get when, we're not in England though. People don't care. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe We're in New York. Well, I remember there was like a a bus stop, a school bus stop, uh, when I was growing up. Someone threw paint. Someone like dropped a paint can on the road, (laughs) and that was there for like years. Yeah. (laughs) But then again, I guess because like it didn't interfere with anything, no one really cared. Yeah. 
Uh, but here's what uh, a spokesperson said. Has this person, for just one second, considered how families with young children must feel when they're confronted with these obscene symbols as they walk to school? <laughs> and then, not only is it vandalism, but it's also counterproductive. Here's why. Every penny that we have to spend cleaning off this graffiti is a penny less that we have to spend on actually repairing the potholes. Uh, which which you there. pay over which you pave over and fill the potholes in the process anyway. Yeah. What what uh, kind of thinking is that? I don't know, but they're holding their feet this guy's holding their feet to the fire and saying, Hey, uh fix these. Yeah. Otherwise you get to look at dicks. Hmm. It's the most it, it's a harmless thing, that's what I think. Yeah. Are people even offended by, like, crew drawings of dicks anymore? I don't know if they're... I mean, to me, it would just be, like, an eyesore. I wouldn't be offended. I would just be, uh... Well, I would start to think, well, now we're Detroit. It would be annoying. Like, this looks really bad. Like, (laughs) I live here. (laughs) It's very true. I don't know. (laughs) That's very true. I'm thinking this is more, like, for major roads where everyone actually sees them. Then it'd be like, oh, we can't have this here. Yeah. (sighs) Ugh. Uh, mm-hmm. potholes. Uh, let's let's shift this up a little bit. This actually kind of relates back to uh, the whole sex and masturbation thing we were talking about before. Uh, there is now a service in the Netherlands where you can fill a dildo with 21 grams of your deceased one's ashes. <laughs> yep. It's actually called 21 Grams. Uh, it's a memory box that allows a widow to go back to the intimate memories of a lost beloved one. Uh, it just It's just that this memory box happens to be inside a dildo. And here's a picture of it. It actually looks like a little a mini case. Yeah. There's like a, a perfume to... spray bottle. There's like a... It, it's like a mini little shrine. Yeah, it's a little weird look. It's a little uh, stark for me or something. Alright. You know? Well, I think I think the main thing that I have to th- I'm not an expert on dildos. Usually, I, I would I would picture like a red velvet lined box or Very something. Very true. Like warm and inviting and romantic, and this is like maybe have like a candle that's like perpetually lit in there. Th- this looks like a '70s computer or something. It's like it does. It's How like I beige, it? and I guess it reminds me of the Netherlands. The Netherlands a little bit. It reminds me of IKEA. Now that I think about it. It's yeah. It's geometric and like. Beige. Now, I'm not an expert on dildos, but it, it, it's a glass dildo, I think. Are you, are you sure about this? Yeah. Pretty, yeah, it's it's a glass urn that's shaped like a dildo. Okay. So they mix the gla- ashes into the glass, maybe? Or yeah. Or they have a center? Or, I think it's, yeah, it's like, it's hollow, <laughs> so you have to fill it. Uh, There's a lot of things they do with ashes, isn't there? Well, I was going to ask, like, is, is glass even pleasurable to... Master they make glass stuff, yeah. Yeah? I think it's good. It's smooth. It is smooth. It's also hard. Very true. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm like wondering if it like actually like breaks. Uh, I don't think. Nah, it's not that delicate. They don't make like little thin ones. Uh, let's see. The Siri. Uh, it's not like an ice pick. Sturkenboom is serious about how this object should be used. He suggests bringing nostalgic moments into the act, like your lover's perfume and their favorite music, which will open a window to go back to moments of love and intimacy. Yeah, you know this guy's getting himself put into one of those things. <laughs> Definitely is. I now, don't know. I, I, I mean, have, have you ever? Well, I know that's kind of far down the line for you to think about, but like, what what are your plans when you die? I don't. I don't know. I don't really have any plans. Have you ever leaned towards burial or cremation? Because I want to go cremation all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no one. <laughs> well, first donate my body to science if I'm not completely beyond repair, and then burn the remains. Unless, can you do that? Can you do what? How you be, donate your body to science and then and then have them whatever do, they whatever well, they can't harvest. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure. You, well, I think donating your body to science versus like organ donation is different, and it depends what you. I'm, you can definitely do like a line item veto and say like these are the things I want to. Although maybe donate. maybe I think it's better like I do the whole organ donor thing. Oh my god. There are people in my yeah, family that are pissed you're as like hell. Needy, though. Yeah. yeah, there are people who are pissed as hell in my family that I have an uh, that I'm an organ donor on my license. Yeah, they think it's a conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. they think like, oh well, if you're in an accident, they're not going to revive you. Yeah, like, of course they are. I'm still going to be a person. Yeah, <laughs> they're not going to purposely let me die just so that some sick person can have my kidney. That's 
Right, they have no vested interest. It's a bit interest. overkill. They don't have a vested interest like that, yeah. No, they don't. And I know and I know some ENTs, and they're not... They don't harvest organs like that. Mm. They don't do that. <coughs> Where do they get these ideas? That's what I want to know. I don't know. Is it just, well, like, regular paranoia? I guess so. And, and like, uh, I don't know, though. I, I would probably... I don't know. But I think when you're at I a don't ton- really care. Yeah. When you're at an age when I think you can seriously consider <laughs> cremation and, like, burial plans, uh, I don't think that sexual... Fulfilling your widow's sexual desires is a high priority on the list. Well, it's a cool... I mean, it's a nice thing. I can see it being a nice thing. Like, it's a way of tying you to this object. In a dildo. Yeah. It's not even like a regular urn. It's not like a... It's not a little pot. That you could just fill your burned remains with. No, nope, it's a dildo. I forget what else? they can. They can um take your the you know when you are cremated. Basically, all that remains is like the what is it like? It's carbon, basically. It's a carbonized bone or something. Yeah, your bone it, it's is all dust baked into carbon dust, and so you can take that dust and uh. Under high pressure, they can make it into a gemstone, and then they can fit that onto, like, jewelry. That I've heard of. Uh, I've also heard of... Which is about as useless... I mean, as useful... Well... I've also heard of people uh, putting it into, like, flower pots, and then growing, like, a plant in it. Yeah, oh, that's nice. So it's kind of like, oh, well, he's gone, but his remains also fostered this plant. You, you know Which what? I know isn't a fair trade, but what are you going to do? I recently read that a, a lot of people... Um, Take their cremains to Disneyland, to Disney World. Yeah, <laughs> they go to Disney World and they try to leave them play on rides and stuff. And Disney has like a team come in to stop that. Yeah, and it's not like a biohazard team, but it's like a similar thing. Like, there's nothing wrong with the ashes, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I actually remember people reading that, that work there. That's gotta be like, that's gotta be a weird hassle part of the job. Like, no, you can't. I know Grandpa loves Space Mountain, but you can't just throw it on the ride. People talk, yeah, at work, they talk about the mysterious gray dust that appears. And... <laughs> but it's like a mess. Mystery solved. It's just it's like, this is a place for everyone, and if everyone was allowed to do this, you'd it would be horrible. It'd be all dust everywhere. It's very true. Because a lot of people tie their best memory to Disneyland and Disney World. Yeah. So I can, I can see... Hundreds of people every year just trying to, like, coming in and, like, trying to dump maybe about a, a, a coffee can's worth of ashes. Yeah. If there's anything the Big Lebowski has taught me, it's that an entire person, once burned down, can fit into a Folgers can. <laughs> the Big Lebowski, man. Yeah, right? Big Lebowski, man. He, uh... There's, there's this show called, uh... Getting... There's this guy called Doug Stanhope. He's a comedian. Yeah. And he has a show called Getting Dug with High. And it's a web it's a web uh, show that he airs at uh, 4.20. But he airs it at 4.20 at different time zones. So like it's ch- like it's so that your time zone gets a chance of being the one he airs that. Oh, wow. So like you can smoke with him. <laughs> and, he, and his guests are all like, eh, like mm, maybe B or C list uh, celebrities, mostly comedians, who who are willing to smoke pot with him. Uh, well, that's kind of cool. And that's so they cool. they smoke and they talk about junk. <laughs> they like when's the first? Who's the most famous person you got high with? Who did, anyway, uh, it kind of sounds like between two ferns, but yeah, it's more stoner well, related. It's not. It's not like yeah, like they don't try to be super funny or anything. They just it's just very casual. But it's in, you hear some interesting stories. I, I'm all about hearing stories from celebrities. I mean, like so. I don't, I don't. I've only smoked weed uh, a couple of times. Yeah. So I, I I guess like something like that wouldn't really appeal to me. I guess it's like one of those it, things like if you want if you're alone and you really want to smoke with someone and you're lucky enough. Well, I think he, he has like sponsors and fans and stuff like he, like different glassware companies are there and they're like oh we have we have, they have like a bunch of different pieces on the table and we're like which one would you like how do you, what do you like to do it's just I don't know I don't know it's whatever. Well, it's it's one of those little things that makes the world go round. Yeah. Uh, one last thing. He had, uh, he had a piece, by the way, called The Big Lebowski, and they were talking about... Oh, that he, explains the tie-in. How, in the movie, uh, he doesn't ever use, like, a any kind of... He he always has, like, tiny little roaches that he's, like, scraping by on. Yeah. 
because he's like a bum. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but, That's uh, the entire premise of the movie. But they thought it was ironic that he had that. And, that, and they have a, this big, int- elaborate contraption made of glass named after him or something. <laughs> anyway, that's all. So. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know what? I remember reading an article like, uh, wow, the Big Lebowski. The Big Lebowski on the surface is about you know this bum that just wants to get his rug back. He wants. He wants. He wants the. He wants these people who broke into his home and thought he was someone else to just replace the rug. It, th- it gets so weird at the end when they're like, "This was." Yeah, it's so weird to me. And then uh, the article went on to say, like, "Well, this story is like really, really deep. Yeah. Like, there are layers upon layers on this." <laughs> and I actually remember reading it, like, "Oh, that actually makes a lot of sense." It's like uh, never would have thought about that with the big Lebowski of all things, like the Matrix or Star Wars or like. Uh an old mythology like they all have the it's kind of like how you keep thinking archetypes. about inception yeah yeah inception man i don't know yeah. uh, there's a, yeah, well, i feel like there's some stuff that didn't make sense in that movie but no there definitely are there there are definitely some things that did not make sense with inception if you really get into it it's like well Okay. If if you wanna if but you wanna know what those things really are, I don't uh, remember them anymore. check out check out uh Lyle McDouchebag <laughs> on uh YouTube and he'll actually like he actually like talks about all the things like he hated about Inception. Yeah, like they're they're the levels don't make sense when you when you get to the end of the movie because they oh, go he down it another. Inception. There we go. They go another level down, and it's like, well, well, if this was the bottom level, like where? Dream bedrock. Like yeah, what is going on here? And, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, one last thing. One last thing. Uh, do you know why uh, Twenty One Grams is significant when it comes to? Uh, Death and cremation and ashes. Uh, it's supposedly the weight of the human soul. I think there was the sign. There was a scientist that did some kind of. Yeah. He he like couldn't account for twenty one grams, so he decided. That, right. I actually remember hearing about that on uh, Breaking Bad. They're like, oh well, the human human body is like forty percent this element, or, or like, eighty <laughs> percent this element. But then we can't account for this like, much. I think it's like he has a body like on a scale at the time of death, and it loses that amount or something. Or there's a movie about it called Twenty One yeah, Grams. Yeah, uh, two thousand three movie starring Sean Penn. Yeah. Uh, so if that's how much a person's soul weighs, how much does a fat person's soul weigh? <laughs> I don't know. D- does an old soul uh, acquire uh, <laughs> twenty one gram crackers? Sedi- soul sediment <laughs> <laughs> along the way. Oh, come on, nothing for that? 21 gram crackers. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know, I know. Kill me later. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, let's go with... So, there was this mayor who uh, decided to erect a statue. Okay. And this was in uh, Turkey. <laughs> 20 foot statue, can you guess what it was? Um, well, wait, wait, wait. Was it an animal of some kind? Strangely enough, no. No. Oh, man. Robot. 20-foot oh, robot man. statue. I was going to go with food. <laughs> like pizza. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. he, uh, this yeah. mayor is being sued after he blew an entire budget on a giant robot statue. And i got to say, this would be a normal story of, well, the mayor was just being stupid. But what... <laughs> What drew me into this article was his response to people who were suing him or like complaining about the robot was respect the robot. (laughs) (laughs) Not I did a stupid thing and I just wanted to see how far my mayor powers could get me. No, respect the robot. I mean, maybe he just really likes robots. (laughs) Yeah, maybe. And like, this is like his one taste of power and he was like, I'm going to go for it. What are you really going to do with it now? Dismantle it or something? Yeah, why would you do? You got to respect the robot now. It's, just it's like gonna... uh, it's like the Capri Sun commercials where like people were blowing up the pouches and then they were stepping on it. And they're like, respect the pouch, respect it. I want him to say it like that. Respect the robot right now. <laughs> respect the robot. Do it. Do it. Uh, like, have you, have you seen the that colors. episode of Family Guy? What What is this? I know that's oh, a very... they have a statue. Yeah, they make a statue of the, the Smacks Frog, the yeah, Sugar Smacks em. Frog. And, I, I, you know what? I was, uh, I was like, like afraid for a second. Of, it's made of solid gold. Yeah, yeah, I was afraid for a second you were gonna be like, "Oh, what episode is that?" And then like, uh, no, no, like we're uh, we're on that wavelength right there. Um, yeah. I thought it was going to be like explaining Seinfeld all over again because that's the same thing with Family Guy. Mayor West, man. Mayor, Mayor Adam West. Mayor Adam West. <laughs> it's like, oh, solid gold statue of Diggum. <laughs> Mayoring level, Adam West. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what yeah. this is. Uh, wow. 
I mean, it's yeah, it's just going to cost you more money to dismantle the statue or do anything to it. And so then you, melt it down. It's or... not even gold. It's probably just junk. Scrap. Yeah, it's a 20 foot tall metal robot. <laughs> yeah, so scrap metal. It's going to give you some money, but I mean, what do you, you might Ooh, as well it's just. looks like a transformer now that I think about it. <laughs> you might. Oh, it looks pretty cool. It's like, looks like I'm definitely geared up for battle. He's See, gonna... that's the thing. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. I would want that in my town. It's strong looking. Shoulder pads, knee pads, helmet. Uh, what would what would you erect a statue to? <laughs> I know that's a Cards Against Humanity card, but... What would I make a statue of if I could make a statue? Absolutely free reign here. Worshipping something? Uh, yeah. Honoring, in tribute to something? Alright. Um... Because I guarantee whatever you think of, there's definitely a statue of something dumber. I mean, I think I would just make a big, like... It would be, like, the size of, like, three regular family houses. And it would just be a boombox. Wait, what? Uh, yeah. Okay, I was like not prepared for that. Like, a boombox you could climb on. Like, it would be pretty big. Yeah. So, so, the size of three houses. Yeah, just, like, the size of a tennis court. Something like that. <laughs> I mean, maybe not three houses. But, you know what I mean. I was pretty not big. prepared for that. Pretty big size. Not at all. Why, why a boombox? Big boombox. That would be cool. <laughs> Well, I guess, be, I guess with that offhand uh, question of what would totally you erect dope. a statue to, yeah. I guess a boombox isn't that far off. And like the the speaker, uh, the speakers on either side could have kind of have like a rim thing where you can kind of like lay inside them like giant hamster wheels, but oh, they don't move. Kind of cool. But it'd just be like you could sit on it and I, take pictures on it. Where would that statue make sense? That's what I want to know. I don't know. Well, I feel like Saint Louis for some reason. I don't know. But then again, they already have the arch. So, they don't need another thing. Yeah, you don't need it. It's, you don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> you, Statues are you totally don't. unnecessary in life. Well, maybe maybe in like a... If they ever... I know there's a Rock Hall of Fame. I've been to the Country Hall Music uh, country music Hall of Fame. Do you think there's ever going to be a Hip Hop Hall of Fame? There might be already. There might be? I don't know. I don't know. That, that, that sounds like a very likely thing. It sounds like thing. a thing that exists. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have hip hop awards. Yeah, yeah, they already they already have hip hop awards. Why not a hip hop hall of fame? I think it. that your boombox statue would make uh, would make that make sense. It's kind of right. You there. know, it's kind of like I feel like yeah. I feel like those hall of fame things are so weird because they just everybody's in it. That okay, like if there were like uh, thirty bands around today that you listen to, and twenty years from now, you know, like. 25 of those bands are still like no you know what i mean like uh what what are the, what are the bands not in the rock and roll hall of fame like totally obscure bands that never really made it that's very true it's just well, I mean, like favorite, it's not even like a thing it's, if it's a band that's really gone uh if it's a band that took the world by storm or like has become a household name you yeah. know what i mean then odds are it's going to be in the hall of fame sooner or later it's just like but it, i also feel like they have like they have to put people in it every year I think so, yeah. It's like a yearly... So, like, they just run out of... They just have to... You know, eventually... Eventually there's going to be someone in there like, What? They're not on the same level as this band Or they're totally, like, not even the same... Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. You think maybe there's a quota to fill? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I... <sighs> to me, it means nothing. Because I, when, I when I went to the Country Music Hall of Fame... Yeah. Um... Uh, I feel like it's just kind of like a given for some people to be in there. Like, Charlie Daniels, okay. Reba, sure. Uh, I'm pretty... Maybe, like, in a couple of years, uh, maybe in, like, a decade, uh, Luke Bryan and Blake Shelton, eventually. Okay. Why yeah. the hell not? Because, well, I mean, like, they are they are making country music popular. Right. So, wh- why yeah, not? Yeah, I mean, they're successful uh, Elvis people. is in there, Johnny Cash is in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But it's also kind of like a very arbitrary... I don't think you're any better yeah, of no, an artist no. if you just get into a Hall of Fame. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This, you know, I can't watch those shows. But... Yeah, I can't I can't watch award ceremonies, like, period, anymore. Because it, it really is a giant circle jerk. And it's very... Yeah. Like, even the Oscars are... Uh, I mean, I'll watch them, because it's cool. It's a thing that everybody's watching, I guess. Uh, okay, okay. Like, here, here's a good example. Um... You remember, what was it, two years ago? That movie, Her. Yeah. Yeah, um, that has been, 
put onto so many top 100 lists. It got awards for, I think mm. there was a soundtrack award okay. that it got there. What Did it get an award for anything, like, noteworthy? Like, I don't know. I actor no or story? I think, it, I think it got one for story. I think it got an award for story. Uh, I still wrote it off completely as Oscar bait, and I have no intention of seeing it. Doesn't matter how many awards it's gotten, I thought it was a completely trite love story. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I I just think, like, even if if I saw all the movies that were gonna were up for winning, it doesn't really matter. Like, if this movie won, or this movie didn't won, or this person wins... Yeah, I'm not... It's good for their careers. It's, it's good for not career, really but... good for me. It doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, I mean, if I've already made my decision about wanting to see the movie, then this isn't going to change it. I know there are some people that, my parents included, that basically said, Oh, this got an award! We should watch it! Yeah. Uh, I think it? if it's nominated, it's a good choice. Yeah, well, what was... What was my the, mind. What was the name of the movie with uh, George Clooney and... Uh... Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Let's go. Let's, let me go with another very vague question. Uh, uh, ER. Uh, the one where they're in space. Uh, lost in space. Um, gravity. Gravity. That was uh, the one. Uh, did not see that either. Thought that was stupid. My mom. I thought did, the entire premise was my stupid. My mom didn't but. like it. I didn't really watch it. Yeah. Uh, Interstellar. Seen... I don't know if that even got nominated for an know. award. I've never. I don't thought know. it was dumb. Uh, I gotta see some movies. I guess. I just saw the Lego Movie. That's the last thing I watched. I did it. Dude. I watched Avengers last night. Yeah? It was incredible. Someone told me they saw that today. It was incredible. And you know what? Uh, I saw some critic reviews for it, and they're like, Yeah, it's more of the same. It's not as good as the first Avengers. Uh, I mean, you're expecting them to win anyway, so I guess there's no real point. And it's at that point that... Well, I mean, I've reached this point, like, a while ago, but I think when it comes to critic reviews... Yeah. I just... I can't. I can't. I'm starting to side with the audience on this because the score that they gave it on Rotten Tomatoes was like on the same level as something else that was incredibly mediocre that came out a few months ago. And I'm like, this this is a completely bad system. Why am I even paying attention to you guys? <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes is alright. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes is good, but like I mean it's good if it's good if I wanna know, well, if I don't have to think too much about it, am I still going to like it? And that's what the audience uh, rating is. If I really want to analyze the shit out of it, then yeah. critic review. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think so. But then I have to remember, these people uh, judge it as if it was like a piece of art, not a piece of entertainment. I, yeah, I just, I don't even, you know what I do? I just look at the trailer, and if I'm going to watch it, I'm going to watch it. Well, yeah, that's me too. That's me too. But I think I only dive into reviews if I want to, if I want my opinion validated first and foremost, but if I'm also on the fence about it. It's like a restaurant, you know, you can go in there, you can read the menu, and you can kind of, uh, you have sort of, it's so weird because you're reading this, like, th these words about what you want to eat, like, well, like, this sounds Very okay. True. Why don't they just have pictures, you know, of the food? But... Like, I remember, uh, there was a movie with Gary Oldman called Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Yeah. And when I saw that in theaters, I hated it. Based on a book, yeah. Yeah, I hated it because it was it was it was very drawn out. It was complicated, and it was just kind of boring to me. Uh, and I think audience reviews like kind of mirrored that. Like they're like, yeah, I mean, it's not something you want to bring someone on a first date on. Uh -huh. But the critics loved it. They're like, oh, this is an incredibly spy story. Ooh, it's so realistic. Oh, <laughs> and then I like saw it again. I'm like. Okay, yeah, but this is not a movie that I want to see just to be entertained. This is a movie I want to appreciate. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So, I, it's it's not a perfect system. Not a perfect system. Uh, you know what? There's a, I think you, you gotta just see movies and be disappointed sometimes. I think so. Well, not all of them can be home runs. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna forego the other news stories because the other one is Wimbledon banned selfie sticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which... <laughs> Let's be honest here. Selfie sticks, kind of... It's a bad idea that shouldn't have become so popular. It's, uh... What's I wrong with just using using your arm? Well, it's better. <laughs> you get more distance, you get a better shot, maybe. But it's more inconvenient if you're in a crowd, I think, for everyone else. But something like that, like Wimbledon banned selfie sticks. Okay, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. you don't want everyone else's it's view. It's also, like, a weapon. <laughs> that, too. That, too. Did, did we already talk about I don't think they really riot at Wimbledon, though. <laughs> uh, could be it wrong. was on the line! Could be wrong, yeah. That would be great. 
And the other one was a 73-year-old man punched a bear to save a dog. Yeah, maybe he's going to Wimbledon next. <laughs> Did he have a selfie stick he on him? He punched a bear to save a dog. That's, yeah. That makes sense. The story makes sense. Yeah. Punch, yeah. You can, you gotta, you gotta come strong with a bear. I'm surprised seeing, uh, I'm surprised after reading the article, which was like, it was a little blurb uh, about the guy. I'm surprised that it didn't end with, and the bear mauled him. I mean, if a bear, I don't know, I guess, I feel like if a bear was, even if a bear was like, I don't know, but even if like my arm was getting amputated by a bear biting me, I I would still be punching this bear right in the, like, you know, what are you going to do? Just lay there? Well, I don't know how to feel about it, because there's, like, black bears apparently are very vicious. Grizzly bears are, like, I, I guess peaceful unless they're agitated. I mean, even if you're going to get Polar wrecked, bears will kill you no matter what, you're but you're still never going to get, gonna get fight wrecked with either way. You might as well, like, punch it right in the eye. I, I guess you got a point. I, I guess it's like, well, fight or flight, you're going to lose anyway, so may as well have some fun with it. Yeah. But 73 years old. I, I, yeah, that's pretty old. I guess he stopped caring about, about I, certain I guess consequences, so. maybe. Maybe. Maybe he has experience with bears. Didn't even expound upon that in the yeah. article. Okay, uh... Could have been in the bear military. I'm gonna suggest a subreddit. I think people should check this one out. Alright, uh... Are who would win? Who would win? The classic questions that you always ask. Who would win in a fight? It's like very, Batman it's very, uh, Superman? It's very topical with today's, uh... Tonight there's a big boxing match going on. Yeah, Mayweather, right? Yeah, and uh, Pacquiao. Pacquiao? The I gotta say, I don't, I don't follow boxing that much, but after reading a little bit about the guys, Mayweather is the worst person. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't really know much about it at all. I've seen, I, I can picture uh, Manny Pacquiao, though. He's a little guy. And... Actually, now that I think about it, maybe, maybe there's a... Uh, uh, a post on here already about Mayweather. Let's <laughs> see. Who would win in a fight? Wait, Mayweather or blank? Let me see. But the reason that... Oh, here we are. Uh, and this was one day ago. Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> I wonder what the top response is. Let me tell you some known facts about this matchup. Yeah, people like seriously consider these things. Yeah. Uh, too long, didn't read. Pacquiao should win unless he completely fucks up. Ages considerably overnight, gets robbed by the judges, or suffers a freak knockout. I think he's going to win, too. But, yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything. I mean, I'm, I'm not... I'm going to hear about it tomorrow anyway. I'm not going to tune in for the fight. So, there's that. <coughs> but the reason that I checked this out was because... <laughs> there was a post on 4chan uh, about who would win in a fight, the Predator or Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. <laughs> I know. So that's very funny. It is the funniest. It's the funniest premise <laughs> because you can already imagine Predator going through like uh, the wet bandits. Yeah. <laughs> from Home Alone. Marv. <laughs> with the with the flaming doorknob, uh, the spikes on the stairs, the ice on the stairs, the marbles, yeah. broken glass, all that good stuff. Uh, <laughs> what killed me about it was the fact that the comments on these were like completely serious. How much prep time does Kevin get? Yeah. Are they in the jungle or Kevin's house? Can the predator use his weapons or are they both naked? <laughs> <laughs> I was dying when I saw that. And then I checked out the entire supper and I'm like, oh, wow, this is... There's a lot of serious inquiries here. Like, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Jesus versus Moses. Uh, Floyd Mayweather versus Macau. Uh, Daredevil versus Top from uh, Avatar. Huh. <laughs> like... What? <laughs> Thanos versus Luigi. Jesus Christ. Well, <laughs> have you ever had like a, a matchup that you're like, well, I want to know the answer to this? Um. Because I guarantee you, if it's like a comic book character, it's probably already happened. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Who do I really like? I they think... got Danny Phantom versus Mewtwo. Danny Phantom. Yeah, <laughs> right? The Scourge of DeviantArt. Um. I don't know. I like Gambit. Oh, from uh, X Men. Yeah, Gambit's pretty cool. He is pretty cool. Gambit's height. I would probably yeah. I you know who I really like. Uh, he would be a good person to match up against somebody. Nightcrawler. I would have to put Nightcrawler up against. Uh, I don't know who would be good to put Nightcrawler up against. I might have to go into League of Legends stuff. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> LeBlanc versus Nightcrawler. That'd be interesting. 
But maybe works. nobody knows uh, what I'm talking about. I don't know. Hey, we'll, we'll give it a shot. Yeah. Give it a shot. I want to know what people really want to see is like a death battle. Because they already have like a... There's a Screw Attack YouTube series called Death Battle. Yeah. And they've already done like Superman versus uh, Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. They've already done Mario versus Sonic. I was going to say Bowser versus somebody. Yeah. What do you think Bowser versus Dr. Robotnik? Dr. Robotnik would win. I think Dr. Robotnik would win. Bowser, Bowser's kind of a pushover. Yeah, he always is. <laughs> but, like, Dr. Robotnik actually has robots. Oh, yeah, they did Dr. Robotnik versus Dr. Wily. And it turns out neither of them would win. <laughs> yep. Okay, you know what? This is good. This is yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm totally going to upload this later. Uh, later today. Hopefully the iTunes feed now works. I finally got it up on iTunes. Nice. And I totally lied last week when I said I would have the post show up during the week. That did not happen. So, no, hey, more right. updates this week. All right, then. Cool. We're done here. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs>